For more than 10 years, Taylor Swift has dominated the music industry with her numerous hit albums, highly sought after tours including the trendy Eras tour, which has been sold out AF, and more, resulting in a net worth reaching hundreds of millions. The 33-year-old superstar might also be able to embrace the title of real estate mogul soon too, considering she owns a handful of unique properties, from a lavish Manhattan penthouse to a Rhode Island mansion, a classic Nashville estate, and more. It's said that T-Swift's real estate is valued at over $80 million in total, so when she's not busy in the studio or on stage singing to sold out venues, she has quite the selection of luxury homes to unwind at. For our first stop, let's check out New York City, where Taylor Swift basically purchased an entire block for $47.7 million. First spot in the big city was made back in 2014 when she bought two neighboring penthouses in the Tribeca neighborhood for $19.95 million. Then in 2018, Taylor also snagged the second floor complex in the same building for almost $10 million, which spans over 3,500 square feet of space. Tribeca duplex had a beautiful design to the interiors by the looks of it, and there were amazing features such as an indoor pool. The master suite here boasted floor to ceiling windows with Manhattan city views, but we can see each bedroom had its very own charm and unique furnishings. I love the old world touches throughout this space, which we can see in the chandeliers, headboards, and more. The informal dining room also has full walls of windows on one side, while there's also a pass-through window to the attached kitchen, which offers stainless steel appliances. Elsewhere, there's a double height living room with a fireplace and an ornate chandelier, as well as a cozier den with yet another fireplace and beam ceilings overhead. Also in 2017, Taylor bought a 100-year-old four-level townhome next door for $18 million, which boasted features like a gym, a spa, antique wide plank wood floors, and a planted terrace with a Japanese paper glass wall. The townhouse boasted seven bedrooms and six baths in total, with three of the bedrooms located in a next door apartment. So that would be useful for Taylor's guests or even staff. This townhome was designed by famed architect Leopoldo Rosati and offers a lot of wood panels channeling modern vibes and natural light throughout. A large and open living room has skylights up above, while the kitchen is compact yet chic, comprised of stainless steel appliances and dark wood. The bedrooms were also spacious, with plenty of windows and views of the city. And elsewhere, the residents, there were features like a home movie theater and a rooftop patio. Despite how impressive Taylor's Tribeca compound is, she's since submitted plenty of permits for over a million dollars in renovation. So you already know that she's probably done some work to the place. Most recently, the singer's one-time townhouse in the West Village area, which she rented in 2016, while waiting out the renovations of her combined penthouse, went up for sale. At the time it was put on the market, the sellers were asking $17.99 million. And what's more, it's the home that inspired T-Swift's Cornelia Street too, one of my favorites. The former carriage house on the name worthy Cornelia Street was first looking for renters, not buyers, at the cool price $45,000 a month late last year. While this 153 year old residence still maintains its classic brick exterior, inside it has been thoroughly modernized. When Taylor needs a getaway, she has her Rhode Island mansion to escape to, which she reportedly snagged in an all cash deal for $17.75 million. The property sits on five acres of land with over 700 feet of beachfront, not to mention it's on the highest point in Watch Hill, giving T-Swift amazing views of the water. The quiet neighborhood isn't a huge spot for most celebrities, but that might have been a draw for Taylor to get some much needed privacy. It's rumored that her song, The Last Great American Dynasty, was actually inspired by her Watch Hill property. Let me explain. The song details the previous owners of the estate, especially Rebecca Harkness, who was the widow of Standard Oil heir William Hale Harkness. This was with whom she picked out a home and called in Holiday House shortly before he passed away in 1957. Also, according to Taylor, Taylor's song. After the four-story home was occupied by Rebecca and women with madness, their men and bad habits, it was left empty for 50 years before the singer eventually purchased it. She then goes on to sing, who knows if I'd never showed up, what could have been. Either way, the Rhode Island estate spans 12,000 square feet inside with eight beds, nine baths, and eight fireplaces throughout. Not to mention plenty of space for all her guests when she throws her summer parties. The interior of the home 
home has many period features like you might expect from a 1930s state, such as the fireplaces, as well as hardwood floors, crown moldings, and two kitchens, including a service kitchen. We can tell the generous living spaces come in handy as Taylor has been known to entertain her fellow artists and models at the home. Most notably, her famed 4th of July parties where a ton of photos have been posted to Instagram in the past, showing off her kitchens, common rooms, and many terraces. Being a Nashville native, of course, T Swift also owns property here. One of her first ever real estate purchases was in 2009 when she bought a penthouse on Nashville's Music Row for $1.9 million, which spans over 3,200 square feet of space. It's a corner unit with three bedrooms and 4.5 bathrooms over two levels. The penthouse is located at the Adelicia Complex and offers soaring ceilings and plenty of floor to ceiling windows overlooking the city views. Other amenities in the building itself include a heated Olympic length pool, gym, and a personal trainer. Not to mention, we've caught glimpses inside Taylor's apartment here, and the design was surprisingly unique. It was playful and girly with vibrant splashes of color. Taylor also owns another estate in Nashville, her mansion in the Forest Hills neighborhood, which she bought in 2011. The Greek Revival estate was built in 1934 by the ambassador to Denmark at the time, and the main home spans 5,600 square feet with four beds and four baths. Known as the Northumberland Estate, Taylor snagged the property for $2.5 million, but these days it would probably be worth double that. It's said that Taylor purchased the home for her parents who have lived there for almost all her life, but either way, this massive mansion is big enough for the whole family. Walking in, there's an entry foyer with curved staircase and chandelier overhead, while other grand living spaces include a blue painted dining room, formal living room with vaulted beamed ceilings, a library, and more. The home is full of old southern charm and also includes vaulted ceilings, marble fireplaces, and classic touches throughout, while all the bedrooms are roomy and comfortable. I'm sure that even if Taylor did buy the place for her parents, she likely got her pick of any one of these stunning guest rooms to make her own. It's only fair. Outside, you'll find a pool and a detached 2,000 square foot guest house. Taylor basically loves spending time in Nashville still because it's also where she launched her music career and she claims to love the laid back vibe and being able to go out to the store without swarms of paparazzi. While that's far from an exhaustive list of Taylor Swift's properties, these are the places which the starlet likely spends most of her time. And for today, that'll wrap up this house tour. But before we go, answer this question for me. It might be hard to choose, but what is your favorite T Swift? song and why. That one's for all my Swifties out there. Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram to chat. I'm Kara the Vampire Slayer and I'll see you all in another video. Bye!